In this video, we will be adding a balcony to our second story building as part of our ongoing remodeling or building project for this particular house. And don't forget to visit the playlist if you want more information about the construction of this building. And you can see here where the joists are running this way. They run that way continuously through the house. Since we will be adding a structural beam, we're probably going to need larger footings in this area, in this area, where the posts are going to be transferring the weight to the foundation. So you could see where something like this could be a nightmare if it was going to be a remodeling project. So again, the joists are going from one side of the building to the other side of the building. And we're going to go ahead and change that to where this section of the building will have the joist running in this direction. And we will be using a structural beam here along with top flange hangers and the same size joist. And we will be using conventional lumber for our cantilever. And you might need to consult local engineers or building authorities in your area to verify whether or not this will work on your project. And you can see here where the structural beam will be transferring the load down to this post and then down to a larger extension of the foundation to help distribute the load into the soil. Next up, let's take a look at the window header that might need to be larger to support the additional weight. And you might be required to use double window trimmers. So that would be an additional trimmer or jack stud on each side. Next up, let's head over to the wall here where we are going to be blocking the joist. And we will also need to install some type of ceiling drywall backing. And I went ahead and ran this beam past a little bit so that I could have a little more room to nail the flange on this side of the hanger. You're not going to have the same problem on the other side. And the same might not work if you ran this one through. For one, this part of the beam would be protruding into this section of the stairway. This part of the rim joist here is lining up with the face of the wall framing studs. And if the beam was going to stop right here and then this one was going to butt up against it and I needed to install a hanger, I might have a difficult time with that. Next up, let's take another view of the beam here and then just kind of check out how the hangers are going to be attached. And you could always install web stiffeners here and you might be required by your engineer to install them anyway. Now we're going to be switching from single joist to double joist hangers over here so that we can slip the decking joist into this hanger and have both of the joists supported by the hanger. Now over here I don't have a web stiffener. Over here I do. And sometimes it's going to be better to install this, whether it's called a backing board or a web stiffener. And this will provide us with a way to attach the deck joist to the floor joist. We could drive some 16D nails in here to create a nice connection between the two boards. And let's go ahead and remove the decking joist to give you an idea of what I'm talking about here. We're going to use a board that will fit in here. And I believe the manufacturer wants to have a gap at the top. I believe it's about an eighth of an inch. I'm not sure. So don't cut these backing boards tight. Allow for expansion. And the main reason why I'm using conventional lumber here is because I noticed the manufacturer had a maximum cantilever of two feet for one of its examples where ours is going to be four feet. And there was another method for a maximum of a four foot cantilever, but I couldn't tell what kind of material they were using for the deck cantilever joist, whether it was an engineered type of lumber or conventional construction standard lumber. And another problem you could run into would be the difference between the two pieces of lumber. The expansion and contraction rate could be different and create problems. So if that's the case, you could always separate them like we did here and then go back to single joist hangers, get rid of the double joist hangers. And then you could simply space these 16 inches on center in between the truss joist. And don't forget, I am not using any web stiffeners over here. You might need to install them. And I think web stiffeners are those kind of things that you're not going to go wrong installing. I've never came across a situation where you couldn't use them. And of course, we're going to need our ceiling backing over here for the drywall. Next up, let's go ahead and head back up to the top, give you a view of how this is going to be going out here. And I did come back 
three quarters here. So the cantilever is extending out a quarter at four feet. We're coming back 12 feet here. And since I came back 12 feet from the front to here, I actually created a problem for my floor sheathing. You'll see that here in a little bit. And I went ahead and notched the rim boards over the deck joist. And you can see here where we have our web stiffeners. And the exterior deck is going to be two and a half inches lower than the floor framing. So we are going to have some blocking on the outside. And these blocks might not be required if you're going to use decking materials instead of floor sheathing. Next up, let's go ahead and remove the decking joist. Just kind of give you an idea of what it might look like. Go ahead and reinstall it with our blocking. Next up, let's go ahead and install the floor sheathing. So we're going to be using the sheathing for the deck also. That means it's going to need to be waterproofed. And here's the strip that I was talking about. I have like 12 foot, two and a half inches, which means I'm going to have to cut a small strip at the end. And the engineer might not like that. So check to see if you can move that beam forward a little bit so that you could use four full sheets of floor sheathing instead of cutting a small strip at the end. And next up for you die hard do it yourselfers, the people that just aren't going to quit until you figure it out, then stick around for the next video where I'm going to provide you with a little more information about building a set of stairs that would go up to a deck like this one. Here is another one of our stair building videos where I am not going to provide you with step-by-step -step instructions on how to build this stairway. I have books and other videos on that. However, we are going to be taking a tour of the stairway to provide you with a few things you might consider when building this type of a stairway. So let's go ahead and jump right into it. We have treated lumber and pins connecting the treated lumber to the concrete. And I realize some of you are going to use treated lumber for your stringers. And I say go for it if that's what you need to do. And I understand that in some areas treated lumber might work better. Here's a view of the stringers connecting to a beam and you can toe nail the stringers into the beam with 16D galvanize some type of a nail that is going to be corrosion resistant. I would like to say corrosion proof, but I have not came across a material like that yet. I know some people say that stainless steel is awesome. However, I have seen stainless steel or something that is sold as stainless steel fall apart and start to corrode. And here you can see where the beams are sitting on top of the wall and budding into the first joist. And even though I would like to build something like this, if I could, I'm not going to buy an extra long board to build something like this. And you might need a support post located inside of the wall framing and underneath the beam to transfer the structural load from above down into the wall framing. However, for a stairway, that might not be necessary because we're really not going to have a lot of weight up there. And of course, here's a version of the beam flush with the wall, providing you with another way to build something like this, along with our double stringers and our mitered corners here. And the double stringers will provide you with a little more structural support. And the mitered corners will provide you with another way to finish off this part of the stairway and the beam sitting on top of the post. Next up, let's take another look at the stringers. And even though I didn't provide one in the center, you can always double up that one also. And for those of you who have watched some of my other videos, when it comes to the outside stairs, I'm not a big fan of nailing lumber together, especially under certain weather conditions where moisture can seep in between the stringers. And if that moisture remains there long enough, it can start to rot and deteriorate the lumber. And if that is a concern of yours, then you might consider using a 4x12. And the reason why I am not using a 4x12 up against the wall is because we can actually fasten this stringer to the wall studs to provide us with a nice structural tie. However, this might not be the case in the center of the stairway or at the edge where we are not going to have additional support like the wall framing. 
Next up, let's go ahead and add a spacer in between the stringer and the wall framing. And this is going to be a one by four. And then we are going to build a little guardrail. And the guardrail can finish with stucco or siding. And if you notice, we are going to take a metal post and embed it into a concrete footing. Otherwise, this wall will not be very strong. You might even be able to move it. And we do not want any part of the stairway moving if possible. Now here's the three quarter inch gap I was telling you about that you might need to install some type of stucco or siding or other finishes. And again, this is just something you can do, not something you have to do. However, the post is something that most people don't do. However, they should do. So another view of the wall and the post. And you can connect it with some bolts. And next up, let's go ahead and take a look at another way to build a guardrail on the outside here. And we're going to use 4x4 four four posts, 2x4, two 2x2s. Two two and we will be bolting the posts to the stair stringers and to the landing beams. Let's go ahead and come around here. And you can see here where we have a post on each side. We have about a one inch gap here. And of course, just another way that you can build this. Under the handrail, we have a one by two that we can use to fasten the balusters to, and at the same time, fasten the one by to the top railing. And I've built a lot of handrails like this. It's actually a common architectural detail along with the angled balusters connecting to the angled one by four. Take a look at the bottom here and you can position this either higher or lower. However, most building codes suggest that you cannot get a four inch round ball through any part of the stairway, including the guardrail in between the post and the balusters. And of course, this area right here. So you might need to lower this to make it work. Another view there. Let's go ahead and go on to the inside, which basically mirrors the outside. And you can use larger balusters and larger railings. Don't forget, we're using two by fours. You could always use two by six. And again, this space right here cannot be larger than four inches. And if you don't know what your local building codes are, you can always check with your local building department or even local contractors might be able to provide you with that information. And of course, we have our metal pole. And in this example, I took the pole and I shoved it all the way over to the edge of the post here so that I could nail the bottom angled railing. Otherwise, I would have had a problem there connecting the bottom railing, the bottom board, this one right here to the bottom of the post. Now, another thing you can do will be to countersink your bolts if you don't want them to be sticking out like we have here. And hopefully you have enjoyed this tour because we are at the end of the video. And if you have any questions about this particular stairway, feel free to leave them in the comment area. And for those of you who might be interested in how this garage with the loft was built, make sure that you go to our website and then click on the home building tab and then the garage tab and you should be able to find the project. This I think is a 20 foot wide by 24 foot garage and I think that's where you'll find the projects at.